I'm going to do that. Let's turn to 269. That'll be our first song. Uh, no one gave me any announcement. Dale's here, so we're better than last week. Good to see everybody that's here. Of course, Josh and his wife are visiting. Looks like he got too much sun yesterday. Uh, on a personal note, my wife, I keep talking to my wife, and she's got away from just not talking about coming back, and now she's talking about when she comes back. So y'all keep praying. One of these days, maybe. Uh, and pray for her physical health, too. She's having a lot of health problems. She, I was up with her night before last, so um, it'll all come together, I hope. Let's turn to 269 and begin a worship service. When the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall arise And the splendors immortal shall envelop the skies When the angel of death shall no longer destroy And the dead shall awaken in the morning of joy In the morning of joy, in the morning of joy We'll be gathered to glory in the morning morning of joy, in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning of joy. When the King shall appear in His beauty on high, and shall summon His children to the courts of the sky, shall the cause of the Lord have been and your soul may be spotless in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning of joy oh the bliss of that morn when our loved ones we meet with the songs of the ransom we each other shall greet singing praise to the lamb through eternity's years with the past all forgotten with its sorrow and tears in the morning of joy in the morning of joy We'll be gathered to glory In the morning of joy In the morning of joy In the morning of joy We'll be gathered to glory In the morning of joy 283 Be our next song 283. After this song, Brother Charlie will lead us in our opening prayer. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross a trembling soul love and mercy found me there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river 
Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadows o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Our dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks for each and every day you've given us on this earth. We're sinners, we often fall short of where we need to be. Pray that you ask for your forgiveness when we do fall short, that you will strengthen us and we'll grow each and every day and become better Christians than we were the day before. Pray for this nation. We've got a lot of problems here. Problems are nothing new that are for men or new to man. We pray that you'll give us the strength to deal with them, that you'll give us the leaders and we'll deal with them in the right way and do the thing that they should do. When these leaders will act the job you appoint them for the good of the people. We pray for the health of any we know of that are sick and any we may not know of also. They'll be able to deal with their illnesses. Those praying them will have the right remedies. And it will be your will that they will be cured. And if not, will you please comfort and help them to get through those difficult times? Pray for the whoever's speaking today, the speaker, that he may have a good memory of what he's studying. And that we can listen to it and gain some knowledge from it. Knowledge not for our own personal use knowledge to serve you better and to be better stewards of your word and to teach others. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us, the family of this country we live in. All thanks are asked to your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn to number 105. 105. This will be the song before the Lord's Supper. If you're able, would you please stand and remain standing for the first prayer of the Lord's Supper? 105. When we meet in sweet communion, where the feast of <coughs> is spread, Hearts are brought in closer union while <coughs> precious feast all else surpassing wondrous love for you and me while we feast Christ gently whispers do this in my memory. God so loved what wondrous measure, loved and gave the best of him, bought us with that matchless treasure, yea, for us his life was given. Precious feast, all else surpassing, wondrous love for you and me. While we feast, Christ gently whispers, do this in my memory. Feast divine, all else surpassing, precious blood for you and me. While we sup, Christ gently whispers, do this in my memory. Precious feast, all else surpassing, wondrous love for you and me. While we feast, Christ gently whispers, do this in my memory. Father in heaven, <clears throat> our most loving and forgiving God on high, we, as we come to this portion of our worship service this morning, we pray that our hearts.
hearts be pure and our minds be open that we examine ourselves as we partake of these emblems that represent our Lord and Savior Jesus. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. read from John chapter 1 1 through 4 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men I read this because we need to remember that he was there from the beginning, that he was give that up to come to this earth to do our our Lord's beckoning, teach us how to live on earth as in heaven. And he gave himself up to the cross and cruel death while we were still sinners and not understanding. He loved us so much. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, as we partake of this loaf that represents our Lord and Savior's body, we will pray that we will reflect back on that day. That we remember the punishment that He took for us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Father in heaven, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, it represents the blood that our Lord shed for our sins and for the purpose of the new covenant by which we live. We pray that we will do so in a manner pleasing to thy sight. For it's in Christ's name we pray.
it completes the Lord's Supper, we're also commanded that the first day of each week to pay back a portion that we have laid back. And we will do that now. One eleven. One eleven. Be the next song. <clears throat> it's written in nine eight time. I sing it a little slower than that. So. <clears throat> Take my life and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to Thee, take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Lord, I give my life to Thee, Thine forevermore to be. Lord, I give my life to Thee, Thine forevermore to be. Take my will and make it Thine, It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is Thine own, It shall be Thy royal throne. Lord, I give my life to Thee, Thine forevermore to be. <clears throat> my life to Thee, Thine forevermore to be. Take my love, my Lord, I pour At Thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for Thee. Lord, I give my life to Thee, Thine forevermore to be. Lord, I give my life to Thee, Thine forevermore to be. Song before the scripture reading will be number 120. 120 will be the song before the scripture reading. If you want to mark the invitation, that will be 454. Yes, that's right. Okay. Now let's sing 120. Let's sing the first, second, and fourth. Give me the Bible star of gladness gleaming to cheer the wonder lone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide that radiance peaceful beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the <coughs> Holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. 
Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. Hold a face lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal. Hold up that splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's shining portal. Show me the glory gilding Jordan's wave. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Scripture reading this morning will come from Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Now, Brother YC will bring the lesson. The Lord is a jealous God. He don't want us any competition from anybody else. A lot of people in the times past have carved them out of God out of wood, chiseled them one out of stone, molded one out of brass, silver, or gold, and then fall down and worship it. They are the creator of that God, and they're greater than that God. And now God that created us is greater than we are. And he don't want us worshiping somebody that's not that great. <clears throat> you all have heard this sermon before. It just happened to have been 11 years ago. Uh, I'm going to try to talk about In Revelations 4.11, it talks about God created all things for his glory and for his pleasure. In other words, you've got them cushions and them seats, what for? For our pleasure, our comfort. We drive a good car with air conditioners, what for? For our glory and for our pleasure, and so on down the line. That's what we're here for, for God. Some people, and we're gonna go through some of them, have taken a position that they're to God themselves, or as great as God. Well, it just don't work that way. So let's take a look at a few things. Be, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all you be are, are you are brethren. This is Matthew 23, 8 through 12. And call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. And it's talking about a spiritual father. Don't call somebody a father, spiritual father, or a rabbi. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall be humble himself shall be exalted. Everybody's on the same team. We're to glorify God. We may have a different job, but your job is just as important as my job, and my job is just as important as yours and everybody else's. That's the thing about it. We need to keep that in mind. Don't stick a title up there that belongs to somebody else. In Acts 20 and 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God 
which he has purchased with his own blood. Have you ever bought a car and give you enough blood to pay for it? Or bought a TV set and paid for it with blood? Believe you me, if you do, you're going to own it. And you're going to want it pretty bad if you do that. <clears throat> what he's feeding us here is the word of God. Let's take heed over the, yourselves of the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost made you, to feed the church of God. And what you feed them is the word of God. Spiritual talk we're about. Keep in mind the church was purchased by God's own son. And his blood was what paid the price. That's a pretty expensive price, and ain't nobody else owned it but him. So he wears the title. Let's keep that in mind. He said in, the, in Matthew 16 and 19, he said to them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed unto, unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. How did God reveal it to Peter? By the miracles that he done is what he did. He done enough miracles that Peter believed it was. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Whose church was he going to build? Not mine, not yours. His, Jesus Christ. And I say unto thee also that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, it will be here, and hell itself is not going to win the battle. When it's all said and done. In Acts 10, 24 and 26, and tomorrow after, the, after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for, waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and their friends. This is where Cornelius was praying and the Spirit told him to go to send one to Joppa to get one Simon Peter to come down there to tell them what they must do. And he gets everybody, all of his friends and all of his kinsmen in the house to, to tell him. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. You don't worship anybody but God. You don't worship me, you don't worship anybody else. You don't worship Peter. You worship God and God only. He created you. He made you. And you're to glorify him. He made me. He created me. And I'm to glorify him. If I don't do that, that's my problem. And if you don't do it, it's your problem. So just think about it. Peter did not want to be in trouble with God when he got Cornelius up off of his knees from worshiping. You don't worship me. I'm just a man just like you are. In Acts 12, 21 through 23, and upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he had given not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. That had to be a terrible death. Worms to eat you up a little bit at a time. But what did he do? He took the place of God. You don't kick God out on the street and get away with it. And this is the cost. This is why Peter got Cornelius up off of his knees. He didn't want to be in trouble with God. Here's the thing about it. Do we want to be in trouble with God? Revelations 22 8 and 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard, heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Even John the apostle fell down to worship an angel. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, 
For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them that keep and uh, of them which keep the saying of this book, worship God. He is the only one you worship. You don't get a, a title for everybody else. You only get a title for God. The rest of us, we're just part of the team. Football team, running back, he expects the blockers up in front of him to clear a hole for him. If they don't, he's got problems. If they do, it's his job to get through the line. So everybody's got a job, and one job just as important as the other. <clears throat> in Acts 14, 8 through 18, and there sat a certain man of Lystia, an implant on his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Peter speak, who steadfastly behold him, and perceived that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up on thy feet. And he leaped and up, leaped and walked. And when the people saw that Paul had done what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying, and the speech of the Lyconian, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and garland unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. Going to sacrifice these things to Paul and Barnabas. Boy, howdy. Somebody's fixing to get themselves in trouble if they don't get out of there pretty fast. Which, when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passion with you and preach unto you that, that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Worship God only then. The living God, not the dead gods. Not the gods that chiseled out of wood or stone or, or rock or something like that. So they got in there pretty fast. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. God allowed the people to do that. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good. How did God do nations good that wasn't serving him? He gave them rain from heaven and fruitful, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Pretty nice to know the season is not going to freeze the first day of August for the cotton farmers, the cotton, uh, maize farmers, and all the gardeners and everything. If we come a freeze in, what would you eat? We wouldn't have no season to eat anything. <clears throat> Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in the break. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and then he did good and gave us rain from heaven and, and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarcely restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. So he barely got them stopped before they did it. And it was not pleased, would not be pleasing to God. In Malachi chapter 1, verse 6 through 14, a son honored his father. And who do we say our spiritual father is? God. And a servant his master. Who do we say our master is? Spiritual master? God is. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, that despised my name, and you say, Wherein have we despised thy name? You offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and you say, Wherein have we polluted thee? And that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. You give God polluted stuff. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? If you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? God wants the best. You remember in Egypt, he told Moses to get a lamb a one-year-old, and he didn't have any blemishes. Couldn't have any blemishes. Couldn't have any things wrong with him. He had to be in good shape, A1 shape. Here, these people were offering to God in Malachi the lame, the, blame, the one that was fixing to die anyway. 
and it didn't please God at all. And now I pray you beseech you that you will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will, we, will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that would shut the door for naught? When you open and shut the door for somebody, you expect something out of it, don't you? Thank you. You don't do that even for nothing. Neither do you kindle fires on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. I'm not accepting your offering. It's nothing but a pile of junk and trash. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. So here he prophesied it's going to be great among the Gentiles, not just the Jews. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, the Gentiles are going to do better than the Jews were doing. But you have polluted it in that you say the table of the Lord is polluted and the fruits thereof, even his meat is contemptible. You say also, Behold, we, with what is wearing it, wearing it is it? And you shall snuff at it, the Lord of hosts. And you brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus you brought an offering. Shall I accept this at your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and vows to sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathens. You don't give God second-class stuff. He wants your first class or nothing. In Malachi 7 and 5, Trust you not in a friend, put you not confidence in a guide. Keep the door of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Be careful of what you speak, even to your wife. Remember Samson? Why did he tell to lie? Like got him in trouble. So only one can be trusted, and that is God. Keep that in mind. He comes first. Got that and upside down. <clears throat> in Daniel 4. I, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought towards me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourished in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid. And I thought upon my bed, and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore I made a decree to bring all in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of my dream. Then came the magicians, and the astrologers, and the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them. But they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Couldn't do it. But at last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. Now, this is uh, Nebuchadnezzar talking. He named, gave name, uh, Daniel a new name, his God. And in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In other words, he's implying there's more than one holy God. And for him, I told the dream, and I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret trouble thee. Tell me the vision of my dream that I may see, seem, that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of my head in, the, in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached into heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of the earth. The leaves there were fair, and the fruit there are much, and it was meant for all. The beasts of the fields had shadows under it, and the fowls of heaven dwelt in the brows thereof, and all flesh was fed by it. 
I saw the vision of my head, of my head up on my bed, and behold, a watcher, and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said this, Hew down the tree and cut off its branches, shake off its leaves and scatter the, its fruit, that the beast get away from under it and the fowls from, from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of its root in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the fields, and let it be wet, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let its portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man, and let a beast heart be given him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the Holy One, to the intent that the, that the living may know that the Most High God in the kingdom of men, and that the Most High God in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth upon over it the basis of man. God sets up the rulers. And he doesn't know who's going to be the next ruler president of this country, good or bad. He sets up the basis of man. He's got a reason for it. He's got his reasons. We don't know what they are. This dream I, Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation. But thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answer and said, answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong, whose height reached into heaven and the sight thereof unto all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the fields dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reached into heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and the holy one come down from heaven and sang, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the root thereof in the earth even when even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the fields and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High which shall come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. God sets up the rulers of, the, of all nations. They may not want to admit it, but he does. And whereas thou commanded to leave, to leave the stump of the tree root, Thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Who's in charge of the earth? God is. When you figure that out, then you're going to get your kingdom back, is what he's telling Nebuchadnezzar. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins. Believe you me, you tell the king he's sinning and you're in trouble. And break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. It will straighten out your life, king, what he's telling him. All this came upon the king Neb uh, Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the, of the kingdom of Babylon. Twelve months later now is when this happens. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have made? Who made it? He claims he did. 
for the house of the kingdom my, by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. I made it from my glory. No, that's not the way it is. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from me. Just like that, he lost his kingdom. And they, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling place shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Seven times shall pass over thee. And I don't know how much seven times, whether that's seven years or not. It may be. Until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Keep that in mind. God still rules. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair was grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes into heaven and my understanding returned unto me and I blessed the Most High and I praised and honored him that liveth forever and ever. He finally got his life straightened out a little bit. Whose dominion is, is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. When his kingdom ceases, the world will cease. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And his doing doeth according to his will in the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? You can't question what God does. Just, you don't have the authority to do that. I don't and you don't and we don't. At the same time, my reason returned unto me and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and my brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my lords sought, me, sought unto me and I was established in my kingdom and excelled majesty, uh, excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praised and extolled and honored the king of heaven, all who works, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in, in pride he is able to abase. So Nebuchadnezzar found out the hard way is what he did. We may find out the hard way in this nation. In Exodus, the fifth chapter, <coughs> Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, Pharaoh and Pharaoh, who is, uh, Mo Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, this saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. We know the rest of the story. Ten plagues, the eleventh plague, was the destruction of his army came. They wound up losing the first board, and we discussed that a little bit in class this morning, whether the girls involved in that or not. But he found out the hard way that God was running the show. The nation was destroyed. He lost his army in the Red Sea. The children of Israel got away, and Miriam rejoiced on the other side of the river. Second Kings 5, 19, Naaman we're talking about, and he returned to the man of God this is after he was went down and dipped in the river of Jordan seven times and got his leverage geared, and came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I, re I will receive them. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servants two mules burdened with earth? For thy servants will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. I'll not offer sacrifices unto anybody but God. In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon, 
to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimmon. When I bow down myself in the house of Rimmon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little ways. He recognized and he figured out that God in heaven was in charge, and that was who to be served. And he knew when he went into Rimbon's palace with his king and master, he had a problem. In Deuteronomy 11, 1 through 3, Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charges and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. And know you this, for I speak not with the children of Israel. This is when Moses come out of Egypt. <clears throat> he was talking to them. Their babies hadn't seen all the miracles that had been done, that had been born since they got out. And, but they had, and they ought to obey God. But we know the rest of that story, too. In Isaiah 64 and 8, But now, o Lord, <clears throat> thou art our father. Talking about our spiritual father. That's what we're talking about. We are the clay, and thou art, thou art potter. We all are the works of thy hand. God made you. God made me. I got a job to do. You got a job to do. If you do your job, I do mine. And God's pleased. You need to keep that in mind. God made you, and you got a job to do. Matthew ten thirty seven. He that loveth father or more than he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. God comes first before anybody and everybody. Period. The way you say it. Matthew 6 and 9, After this manner therefore pray you, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Tells us how to pray. You address God, and you address him as Father. In Deuteronomy 10, 22, 17 through 22, The Lord your God is God of gods, and Lord of lords, a great God, and mighty and terrible with regard to which regardeth not person, nor taketh rewards. He cannot be bribed. Judges today, officers today can be bribed, not God. He does execute the judgment of the fathers and widows and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Strangers get food and raiment too. Love you therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shall thou cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise. He is thy God that hath done, that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thou eyes have seen. This is Moses talking to the children of Israel after they came out of Egypt and after they crossed the Red Sea. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for the multitude. They come back with over 600,000 men besides the women and children. It's a pretty good growth. If you want to be a child of God and you want to worship God and you want to honor God with your lives, you need to hear the Word of God. You need to believe the Word of God. You need to repent of the way that you've lived in times past. Confess before man that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the God, and be buried in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. We'd invite you to come as we stand and sing. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. There's danger and death in delay. Except God's saving grace. His life on the cross he has given. Oh, come while yet you may. He's earnestly pleading. Oh, make no delay. Tomorrow may be too late. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. The judgment day, brother, is coming. Prepare ye for that day. His pardon and mercy he offers. Obey while yet you may. He'll save you from sin and bring sweet peace within. 
Tomorrow may be too late. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. A home up in heaven is waiting. Oh, make the start today. Repent and confess and be baptized. There is no other way. Give Jesus your life and thus walk in his way. Tomorrow may be too late. Let's turn to number 643. 643. <clears throat> Sing the first verse of 643. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Would you bow with me, please? Our Father in heaven, we are thankful for this day and the blessings you've always given us. But more importantly than the physical blessings, we're thankful for the spiritual blessings that your word has told us is in Christ. We're thankful, Father, for the privilege of being your children and coming before your throne and addressing you in this manner. We pray for those that are yet outside Christ that they would obey the gospel before it is too late. For those that have strayed away, that they would return and be restored before it is too late. We pray, Father, that as we walk through this world, that you, in your providential care, will lead us away from temptation. Surround us with those of like faith and like mind, that we may work together in your vineyard and be strengthened. We may bear one another's burdens, that at the end of this life we may be found faithful and have a home with you in heaven. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.